What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? Appreciate y'all. Hey, tapping in with us. You know what I'm saying? Back with another interview. Got my man's Kinslow in the building. Kinslow, what's good with you, Brody? How you doing today? What's going on? Shout out Rue Bear, BFE Kinslow. You know what it is, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We like what you're doing. We've seen you growing. You've been doing your thing for a little minute now, bro. So appreciate the time you have to step in with us, do your thing with us, bro. And uh, let's just hop in straight into it, bro. So real quick, man, coming from the city, we all over, all over niggas here, bro. Where you uh, what part of the city you from? Uh, well, I've been hopped around the city. Um, well, I grew up kind of in Heights Point area. Okay. Um, but I've been hopped around the city. And, uh, you know what I done noticed is other uh, uh, bro went to Atherton. And, yeah. Uh, I, I went to Atherton. Yeah. Oh, uh, snap. So you an Atherton rebel? Yeah. That's what's you already up. know. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. So, like, what was it like for you coming up in the city, bro? What, what you know, what do you remember from your childhood coming up in the city? What? What did it make you feel like? How, did, how how was the city of you coming up? You know what I'm saying? Uh, as a kid and stuff. Um, I think Louisville is pretty unique and like we're uh, kind of we're like a big city, but we're also kind of like this like small community and everybody be knowing each other. And I, I just grew up kind of like that. Everybody was knowing each other and like friend of a friend and uh everybody's nice here and like supportive they you also gotta watch out for some people but you know i feel like that's everywhere but but uh yeah man louisville's great city i i fucks with it it's like a it's like a little tight-knit community kind of but it's also got that big city feel yeah for sure bro for sure, bro. Yeah, that's, you know, one of the things I love about the city is, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you said, it's we're the biggest city in Kentucky, so we feel bigger than everybody else. But as soon as you step out this month, you realize, Kentucky, you know, Louisville ain't that big. So the moment yeah. you step out, you realize that's it. You know what I'm saying? So, for sure, bro, for sure. So, we are, you know, you said you went to Atherton for a little bit. Where else did you go to school at? Where, where else did you go? What did you, you know what I'm saying? Is there a certain school that you had a certain connection with, uh, you made like certain friendships there or you just, you know, Hey, you was everywhere. What, what, what was that like? Um, well, when I started rapping, I, uh, I changed schools. I got kicked out of my, my school and I started going to Atherton and, uh, and I, I was seeing people rapping. I was, I was seeing, uh, I was seeing, bruh, what soon Tonio and I was seeing Jack Harlow and I was like, dang, like, these motherfuckers is really, like, rapping. They really getting after it. And yeah. so that kind of inspired me to start writing my own raps and starting to get after it. Um, I, you know, y'all interviewed uh, Dev DMG. That's mm -hmm. somebody that I grew up rapping with. And, um, you know, we just kind of, I, I think he's been rapping for a little longer than I have. But, like, I, I we both kind of started rapping and, around sophomore year and uh yeah man like atherton was a really big inspiration everybody was really like following their dream and like kind of doing the unconventional route you know not going to college and like trying to make money off their art and stuff so i was really inspired by that you feel me bro one thing i noticed about the city is like everybody trying to be cool you know what i'm saying like everybody trying to be cool everybody don't want to be the first to do something but, like, the thing with Atherton, the thing about the Highlands in general, that Barstown Road in general, but they're going to do their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not scared to do their own thing. And that's nah. where Jack coming from. You know, Jack popped out because, you know what I'm saying? We got to remember, bro, when he was coming out the city, he was the curly-haired, glasses, white boy trying to rap. And, like, it took mm -hmm. a long time for people from the city to take him seriously. It was when he got outside the city and did his own thing, but bro, yeah, that area of town, bro, y'all always did your own thing, no matter what everybody everybody else in the city may think of. So that's ignorant, bro. So you brought up Dev, you know, brought up Dev, shout out Dev Damage, you know what I'm saying? Lonely video coming soon if it's not already out by now. But uh yeah, bro. Uh so you gotta let me know. What's up with Seth Marsh, man? What y'all used to do down in Seth Marsh's house? Yeah, what was that? What was that like? Oh wow, that's yeah, crazy. I'm tapped. Um, I'm tapped. Um, in, yeah, man. Um 
yeah, early days, like early on, like I can't even remember early. Uh, me and Dev, man, we was rapping together, and uh, we we'd rap, we'd make these songs. Like I mean, I wouldn't even call them real songs, but they were like just early, like early snapshots of like us trying to make a song and like we'd go to our friend's house uh nate peacock seth marsh what you know they just have a mic on like a a dresser and <laughs> uh like some little program i don't even know if it was fl or whatever but yeah, it's hard for me to remember all that. But yeah, yeah, we used to just make like little scratch songs and you know, write our little verses and um man, we you know, me and Dev, we just kept doing it and you know. Y'all doing your thing now, bro. Y'all doing your thing now. That's what's up, man. You know, we got you know, we move, man. We you know, we're gonna figure out something, we're gonna ask you some stuff, man. So I seen on another interview already somebody already asked you this, bro, but you know, just for our platform, our audience, how'd you get the name Kinslow? Yeah, that's a that's a cool story, man. And and you know, I think that um when you when you talk about a rapper, like some of them, they be some of them be fire, and most of them have a fire ass name. Right. And I'm real proud of my name. And so, uh, BFE Kinslow. Well, Kinslow comes from um, when I used to get in trouble as a kid and uh, my, my parents, they didn't know what to do with me. Um, Cause I kept sneaking out the house and stuff when they ground me and they, they was like, okay, we're going to put you in these shelter homes and, and you can't sneak out the shelter home cause they call the police. Damn. And so, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. If you sneak out the shelter home, that's all right. But they're going to call the police. They not going to chase you. But they're gonna call the police. So yeah. anyway, so you can't get out the shelter home. Right. So so yeah, so I was in the shelter home. Um, I made a lot of friends that like was beating on the tables when I was rapping. Mm. Um I some people was rapping too. Um and and so I um you know, I like during lunch, people used to be on the table and I used to rap my little my little writings. Yeah. Um I had a like a counselor or like not really a counselor, but like he's like a chaperone, I guess, at the shelter home. Um, a couple of them, real cool ones. And one of them's name was Mr. Kinslow. And um, he wasn't necessarily my favorite dude there, but he was just always real cool. Like he wasn't like he was just like super like G. Like he would just be like, hey, you need a banana or like you getting hungry, like. What's up? Like, I don't know. And and like they used to be a little basketball team on there. And uh he used to like be like coaching the basketball team on there. Yeah. So I don't know. I just kind of took the name off Kinslow, Mr. Kinslow, and I used to go by Mr. Kinslow. And then I just dropped the Mr. Right. So now I'm just Kinslow. Yeah. Hey, all right, bro. Hey, I ain't gonna lie to you though, because like it's one thing to do everything like everybody else. You could have been little murder out here. You could have been little little killer. You know what I'm saying, Mister? Whatever, whatever, bro. But you know what I'm saying. You took something that actually affected you, and you know applied to you, and you used it, bro. Shout out to Mister Kinslow, bro. We need more yeah. people like who's touching, you know, you know, kids that are misunderstood, and you know, I'm just being with them day to day, bro. Because you know, everybody likes to throw their hands up with kids, bro. Everybody wants to just like, man, forget it. But shout out, Mister Kinslow, bro. You know. Keep the youth. Wow, back. that's real talk, bro. That's real talk. Hey, come on, yeah. bro. Come on that's real talk. So, BFB, Born Fresh Entertainment, bro. What Born Fresh Entertainment, can you speak on that? Who's in it? What is that about? How did that come about? I can for sure speak on Born Fresh ENT. Born Fresh, Born Fresh ENT, that's my brand. That's everything that I stand for. Uh, Born Fresh, that's just like when you're listening to my music, you get – you get transcended. You think you born fresh. You mm. you ain't never you ain't never lacking. You ain't never been not fresh. You you just right. born with it. You just born with the drip. And uh, ENT that could be uh, entertainment. That could be enterprises. We just keep it at ENT. So right. you know, um, 
Yeah, Born Fresh, man. Me and my man Coop, executive producer. Um, he uh like put a lot of time and effort into developing me as an artist and uh we started this collective together called Born Fresh ENT and I was rapping on his beats. It was his beats and my raps. And mm. what that is it turned into is sort of like this collective where it's just we're just getting bigger than we ever thought we could, man. We like I you know, I had to ink this little distro contract and now I'm on to bigger things and I'm just trying to elevate the brand into something that we never thought was possible so Born Fresh ENT started that with my man BFE Coop and we're just going to continue growing until it's bigger than what we ever expected Man, that's what's up yeah boy hey shout out shout out BFE Coop hey yeah. for sure and definitely, we definitely see. So that's the thing, bro. You know, once I get an interview, bro, I don't like to just sit you down and just, you know, guess what you got going on, bro. I like to tap in with you. And I'm tapping in with you, bro, and I'm looking on your YouTube. I'm like, hold on. These ain't yeah. no little boy numbers, bro. Like, this ain't no little, you know, this ain't yeah. 342,000 on Juice, 223,000 on Texas, the newest single, Reminiscent, 63,000. Bro, what's what are y'all doing over there for the use? First of all, who's yeah. the videographer? Because they need a shout out. They're doing their thing. I love your videos. Videos is tough. And how do you, what keeps you going, bro? What keeps the content coming? Like, how do you keep creating these videos? Because you're more than just a rapper, bro. Your, your videos actually make sense with the music. Um, Yeah, I'm addicted to this rap shit, man. I'm addicted to this rap shit. Um, I just... I'm just relentless with it, bro. When I was just starting recording, I dropped the EP Dispo 537. It got like a hundred plays in like three months. I don't know what it had. It had small numbers, little boy numbers. And I was like, wow, you know what, Coop? I think we bigger than these little boy numbers. I think we bigger than this. I think we better. I think that people ain't seeing, well, you know, people don't know to type in Kinslow, but like people, like an, ain't enough people looking at this record. Ain't enough people hearing this record. So I got obsessed with music mm -hmm. business and music marketing and digital advertising and strategy. And I got obsessed with it. And uh, I just went loco. And uh, I just, all I did was try to use industry tools to get my numbers up. And I researched for years and I bought different services from different people and I learned the game. And that's what happened. So that's that's really just years of using industry tools, learning industry knowledge, trying to uh, pitch to labels, asking them what they like, what they require. You know, a lot of them, they right now, they really like YouTube. And mm -hmm. so I had to laser focus on how to grow my YouTube organically without bots. That's what's up. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. Because, yeah. you know, it's funny. You know what I'm saying? You're talking, I feel like you're giving out a lot of free game because people want to, you know, they want to drop. They want to spend, you know what I mean? They don't want to spend money on the studio. They don't want to spend money on the studio. They don't want to spend money on the, with the videographer. They don't want to spend money to promote it. They don't want to spend money. They don't want to spend no cheese, bro. And they expect to get, you know, certain things back. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you can grow again. Yes. But you got to put money into yourself. You got to invest in yourself before you even think about doing anything, bro. So I'm glad you spoke on that. I'm glad you did your thing on that, bro. Because like I said, your reminisce, I like. I really like the reminiscing video. Um, we, I watched that earlier this week. I was fired, bro. You, I like how your videos actually incorporate your music. But as an artist, I feel like you can do more than just one sound. You feel me? I feel like you yeah. have, a top, have a song like reminiscing, but you teasing, you know, clips on your Instagram where you're coming 
you come in different, bro. You're coming different. So as an artist, where do you feel like your ability to change your lanes, change how you deliver music? Where do you think that comes from? Yeah, you know, um, it's a gift and a curse because I'm like doing all this like major business with my music and people be like, like, I'll give you an example. Like I um, had some big things happen to me off the song Texas. And they was like, yo, like, let's get more records like Texas. Like you make more. And like, the thing about me is like, everything I make is just a little different. So like, it's hard for me to like stick with one sound. Like I feel like I don't really have a sound and I feel like it's a gift and a curse because people want to like, if like, let's say for instance, I get it big popping. I get a song that's big popping. People probably going to want to hear more of that version of like, like, okay, let give me an example. Let me give you an example. Sleazy World Go. Mm. Um, that man comes out with a song. Now, every song he comes out with got that flow, got that beat. And that's because, like, music business, like, if it's working, like, you know, you just got to, like, elevate it and just keep it going, you know? So, like, I, my one gift and curse is that, like, I make all different shit. And I'm wondering that when I, like, if potentially I had, like, some big viral track that just, like, you know, I was able to sign, like, multi-million dollar deal off of. Um, I'm worried that people would be like, oh, we want that sound all the time. And, and I'm a unique artist. And I, like, it's not that I can't do it all the time, but, like, I just need to be making stuff different every single time. So, like. You know, it's it's a gift and a curse, you know? I feel that. I, feel that. I like that. I like that, bro. I like that. So, yeah. man, so been doing your, I've been on your IG. You know what I'm saying? I see you got things coming up on the works. I see the pick with you with the OS boys, OS Drip, OS Tyler. What's up with that? Y'all got something working up, man? Y'all got something coming? Like, what's, what's up with that? How's that looking like? Yeah, they're big rappers in the city, man, and I just had to connect with them. Um, I had to, I had this song that I was feeling, and uh, yeah, I paid them for a feature. They came, the uh, drip, Tylo, they both came. They knocked it out like professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't have nothing written. Oh, Tylo had like a few bars written, and then he kind of go off that. Um, both of them were punching in. Um, they were, they were, they killed it. They killed, they killed their verses. And like, and like, I'd be like taking forever to write my shit. I'd be taking forever. And they knocked their shit out in like 40 minutes. Just thought of it. Mm. Just punched it in. And like, I know how, like, I know a lot of rappers be punching in, but like, I was like, wow, I was really grateful that they came and blessed me with that, with them verses. Yeah, man. That's what's up, bro. You, hey, you, you deserve to be up there with it, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you, you're not new, bro. You're not new to the game, bro. You put your time mm-hmm. in. You deserve to be right there with them, bro. Yeah. 